I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 160, a review of The Undoing. Well, I watched The Undoing the old-fashioned way, not binging, just week after week on HBO. It was excellent. That took place over the past, I don't know, month or so. And I reviewed most of those episodes in my blog right after I saw them. So I thought I'd share these reviews with you right now, since the show had its finale last night. Well, my first review of The Undoing 1.1, the debut episode, I entitled that review, A Murder, A Missing Person, and New York City Bustling in the Snow. And I said, David Kelly's The Undoing miniseries really had a star-studded cast in its debut on HBO. I mean, Nicole Kidman as Grace Fraser, a psychologist, and Hugh Grant as her husband, Jonathan Fraser, an oncologist on the posh side of New York City, and a murder and a missing person. We can just stop right there, and how can you go wrong, right? You can't. The first episode was sleek and blockbuster powerful, an East Coast analog in many ways of Kelly's California Big Little Lies, which was pretty hot, suspenseful stuff, too, over two seasons. But The Undoing started off with a nice long buildup of rich mothers whose kids are in an elite private school, plus one who's among them on a scholarship, meeting on some auction committee. Before the hour's over, Elena, the young mother with a scholarship for her son, has a conversation in the nude with Grace in a locker room. That is, Elena has not even a towel around her. Elena, on the night of the auction, kisses Grace on the lips, and Elena is found brutally murdered the next morning. And when Grace tries to let her husband know about the murder, he left in the morning to supposedly attend a meeting in Cleveland. She finds that he's gone missing. About as good a setup as you're likely to find on any screen. And so here's where we stood after the first episode. One, was there a connection between Elena's murder and Jonathan's disappearance? We didn't know that yet for sure, but how could there not be? Two, did Jonathan murder Elena? He was the most likely suspect at that point, his motive being jealousy, or maybe he was sleeping with Elena, and she or he wanted to end that. He did say something to Grace about Elena, and his being missing didn't help But all of that is still circumstantial at this point, as they say. There's even a chance, there was even a chance at that point that he too could be dead. What about other suspects? Well, the husband, Elena's, is always a possibility, though he seems like a nice guy. I suppose there's a very outside chance that Grace did it, but she didn't really have the time, and she seemed genuinely shocked to find out about the murder. So, make that chance very slight and outside. My wife suggested Grace's father, Franklin. We didn't know much about him after the first episode, but we did see that he's played by Donald Sutherland, which certainly suggests some kind of significant role for that character. And last, how about someone not at all in the first episode? Well, to that, I'd say no. Kelly's too good to pull rabbits like that out of a hat. So, at the end of the first episode, we had a nice, taut, high-octane mystery on our hands, set in snowy, pre-pandemic New York City, which was fun to see in any case. Now, I reviewed episodes two and three at the same time, and I called that review a dearth of likely suspects. And I said in the review that I didn't get a chance to even see the second episode of The Undoing because I was so focused on the election here in the United States. But 
America pulled back from the precipice as far as politics is concerned, and it was good to be back to watching at least a little fictional drama. And the undoing is mystery drama par excellence. So here's what we learned in episodes 1.2 and 1.3. Jonathan is alive. He's Elena's baby's father. Grace is coming around to at least being open to the possibility that Jonathan did not kill Elena. And she, Grace, was in the area of Elena's murder the night she was so savagely killed. Well, that was a lot to digest. For Grace to be the murderer, she has to be a psycho par excellence, if that phrase can be used in conjunction with psycho. And if memory serves, there's been at least one other drama, maybe a movie, in which the killer was not the patient the shrink was treating, but the killer was the shrink, her or himself. So, now we have two suspects, Jonathan and Grace. I'll go out on an obvious limb. I went out on an obvious limb after seeing the second and third episode and said I think the killer is neither Jonathan or Grace. Fernando, the victim's husband, has the obvious motive, but police say the camera in the area has no record of his being near the scene of the crime. So is that conclusive? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, he could have gotten into the room of the crime some other way. He could have been waiting in an apartment above where Elena was killed, right? So, no, I would say his not being in the video footage was not conclusive. But, and yet, I don't think he's the killer either. Well, when I saw episode 1.4, I entitled my review of that, Three Great Scenes with Sutherland. And I thought 1.4 really was a great episode, even though at that point we still really had no better idea of who killed Elena. I mean, the end of that episode, and that wasn't much of a spoiler even then, points a little more to Grace, assuming that's who Jonathan meant when he told Connie Chung that he lost someone he loved. There's maybe a chance that he meant losing Grace, but if not... If that meant he deeply loved Elena and he lost her when Grace killed her, well, that still doesn't mean that she killed Grace. I mean, the police cam shows her walking away from the murder scene before Elena was killed. Yeah, right? You can never be 100% sure with these things. But that still leaves us with a paucity of plausible suspects. I still think there's an outside chance that Donald Sutherland's character, Franklin, Grace's father, did it. He has a pent-up fury inside him, and Sutherland played him powerfully in this episode, and in more than one scene. I think my favorite was his conversation with Jonathan. In addition to Franklin's words, he looked like he was close to spitting in his errant son-in-law's face. A close second was Franklin confessing to Grace how unfaithful he had been to his wife, Grace's mother. And, in a third scene, Franklin and that, quote, putz, unquote, conover, head of Reardon, that was a fine piece of work from Sutherland, too. As it's been all along, The Undoing was teeming in the fourth episode with great acting. Hugh Grant put in some excellent scenes in that episode, and all of this is still wrapped up tight as a drum as to who did the deed. Is there anyone else, any other possible suspects? Well, I would say it's almost certainly not Henry, not Sylvia either, though uh, I would say she likely is the other woman Jonathan was having an affair with, so I guess that increases her chances of being the killer at least a little. You know, when you can't find a suspect, one sometimes fruitful move is to go back to the first one, in this case, Jonathan. But the combination of the character and actor still has me pretty much convinced it's not him either. So, who then? We're running out of suspects. Franklin, Grace's father, could have done it, I guess. But does he have the physical strength? I don't know. I can't think of anyone else. 
all of which makes for one good detective story, sharply acting with great New York flavor, including that prison room for visits, which looks like it was shot in the cafeteria of my junior high school in the Bronx, or maybe that's just me. Well, I entitled my review of The Undoing 1.5, The Algorithm, The Waiter, and The dot, 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 that is three ellipses after the word the. And I thought those two elements, the algorithm and the waiter, were by no means the most important features of The Undoing 1.5 on HBO, but I didn't want to give away the main thing, actually two main things in the title, and the algorithm and the waiter were nice touches. Finding that Jonathan's attorney uses Amazon-level algorithms to get the crucial characteristics of the jurors, that was cool. And Haley, the attorney, is one outstanding lawyer, isn't she? And the waiter constantly interrupting the meal that Jonathan, Grace, and Henry were trying to have in the restaurant, that was a metaphor for this whole series, being interrupted by all kinds of things so that after five episodes, we still can't be sure who done it. And that restaurant scene did lead to two of the biggest developments in this episode. First, Jonathan, at age 14, was responsible for his little four-year-old sister's death because he didn't keep a watchful eye on her. Jonathan's mother says he never felt any guilt for that, which leads Grace's friend Sylvia to tell Grace that means Jonathan's a sociopath. But Jonathan sure expressed some powerful guilt in the restaurant to Grace about his sister's death, so much so that she comforted him. But before the hour was out, Grace discovered another suspect, Henry. That hammer, or anvil, or whatever exactly that was, could, I suppose, have been wielded by Henry to bludgeon Eleanor. We learned earlier that Henry knew about Jonathan and Elena. He saw the way they were relating to each other in front of the school, so there's your motive. I suppose Haley would be happy to have yet another suspect to throw at the jury, but of course Grace is horrified. And you know what? I still think it's not Henry either. A little too soon, for one, with just one more episode, the finale, next week. And what kind of psycho would Henry have to be to be so relatively calm after committing such a brutal murder? So we'll find out next week. Though my wife says all we may see is Jonathan acquitted and we might never know who did it but I'm thinking we will find out. And right now, at the end of the fifth episode, if I had to choose, I'd say the killer was Elena's husband, Fernando. And again, the finale was on last night. I called my review of the finale Hiding in Plain Sight, and it turns out that the undoing was one big hiding in plain sight situation because it was Jonathan who had been the first suspect and whom so much of the previous narrative suggested was too obvious to be the killer and with more than a few plausible suspects around, not convincing, but not implausible, but notwithstanding all that, Jonathan turns out to be the killer after all. Now my wife thought it was Jonathan at this point. She kept coming back to why did he leave town if he wasn't reeling from the killing. But I bought Jonathan's argument that he was traumatized by coming back and finding the bludgeoned body. And that was pretty close to the truth, actually. Jonathan did try to leave after smacking Elena against the wall, and Elena ran after him with the anvil, and Jonathan took it from her and killed her. Hit her with the anvil repeatedly. So Jonathan's story was close to the truth, except he left out the all-important factor that he killed her. Now, although this ending was somewhat surprising, since Jonathan was presented as the obvious suspect wrongly accused, I have to say that hinging the surprise of a story on a murderous convincing performance of innocence in pretty much scene after scene 
is not my favorite ending to a whodunit. Hey, maybe I don't get out enough in the world, but I find it a little hard to believe that Jonathan, any murderer, could have been at turn so cool, so upset, and therefore all too convincing about not being the murderer. And one other nitpick. I thought that Haley, who, as I said earlier, had been shown as nothing but brilliant and tough up until that final court scene, I thought she got rolled over a little too easily. I mean, wouldn't someone of her caliber had at least a few tricks up her sleeve when things started going so badly in the courtroom? But all in all, The Undoing is a riveting little series with tour de force performances by everyone, down to, and especially in that last harrowing gambit on the road with father and son. The Light on Light Through podcast. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review of The Undoing. I'll be back here soon with another episode of Light on Light Through. In the meantime, enjoy. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson spilled code about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries. 